Hi everyone, my name is Nicola, for those who don't know me. I don't currently attend Canterbury Gardens Community Church, however, um, I did for quite some time. But two years ago, I moved to the US and got married and now Oregon is my home. I live here with my husband. Um, Shabu encouraged me though to uh, do a Friday encouragement, which I was a bit apprehensive about. Uh, but the Lord really encouraged and prompted me to pursue it. And so here I am today. Uh, 2020 has been quite a challenging year for so many, um, in many different ways. Earlier this year, my husband and I lost our first baby girl at 22 weeks in January. And that was a real season of suffering and hardship. Um, However, the Lord has used um, the last six months to really grow and challenge us in ways that he never has before. We um, actually became pregnant again in March. I'm currently 23 weeks pregnant. Um, and quite often people would say to me um, early in the weeks of the new pregnancy, how reaching just beyond that 22 week mark would be really uh, reassuring and you know I'll be really at peace once I reach that mark and the Lord really challenged that in me because the fact is that we had our 22 week scan and not everything was okay and the baby um, we were sent to a specialist um, we actually went just yesterday and um, the baby has like a cleft lip palate issue and possibly something with the eyes. And so again, it was like a really um, hard hit, uh, the reality of, again, facing something that we didn't quite expect. But it seems to be the way that the Lord works. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit about that and the journey of um, what God has been doing in relation to, to the suffering that we've been experiencing. I wanted to share this poem that is written by Paul Tripp. It's out of a book called My Heart Cries Out. And it's called You Chose. You chose this difficult thing. You chose this unexpected moment. You planned this unplanned season. You decided to lead me into mystery. You ordained the trial I am now in. You led me into this valley. You led me beyond the, the borders of my understanding, wisdom, maturity, and strength. You chose this difficult thing. You chose that it would be a humbling thing, a convicting thing, a transforming thing. You chose to travel my normal sources of hope. So I would find hope in you. I do not need to doubt fear, panic, hide, run, accuse or rebel because you did not only choose this difficult thing, you chose me and because you chose me, I know you will not abandon me. You will complete everything for me you have chosen to do. Then he references Philippian, Philippians 1.6 I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of of Jesus Christ. Often we can get into this mindset, maybe without even realizing it, I know that I do it, where we think we should be exempt from suffering or certain kinds. Yet what we forget so easily is that God has this incredible way of weaving throughout our lives and our sufferings his glorious hope. Our perspective shifts entirely when, we, when he shows us in our most weak times that he has a sovereign plan amidst what seems chaotic and messy to our human state. When we hold fast to this hope, the eternal life-giving hope of Christ that does not fade away or disappoint, we experience a fullness of his strength in a way that we cannot attain for ourselves in any worldly or human capacity apart from him. 
Our desire to have a life free from suffering and pain blinds us from seeing how great and mightily the Lord uses our trials and sufferings for our good and ultimately his glory. James 1, 2-4 says, Count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Why is it that we desire ease in life? Maybe because it's more comfortable. However, I believe that God does immeasurably more in the uncomfortable. In our suffering, God is ever near and does not just leave or abandon us. In Philippians 4.19 we read, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in Christ Jesus. We don't face these hardships alone, nor are the hardships ever wasted. There's always purpose in our suffering, regardless of whether we see it here on earth or not. As it says in 2 Corinthians 4.17, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. At the end of the day, whatever trials and sufferings we may be facing, through God's enabling, we are able to turn to him and thank him for the pain. This, in fact, goes completely against the worldly grain of pain avoidance, and that hardship is undesirable. The Lord doesn't just allow this suffering, but is using it in our lives to produce an unwavering steadfastness in him and to grow us in ways in which without suffering we simply cannot. The life we are called to in Christ isn't meant to be easy or free from pain. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory in Christ Jesus our Lord. That was from 1 Corinthians 15, 57. He alone is our sure hope and secure foundation. I just wanted to leave you with some questions to ponder that have really challenged me and I pray they do you too. When suffering enters your life, how are you tempted to respond? Do you count it all joy? In what situations in life right now are you forgetting about God and his strength? When are you tempted to question his goodness and doubt his love? I definitely pray that this, is, this has been an encouragement to you. From so far away, I'm really thankful that I can be a part of this Encouragement Friday. And yeah, sure miss gathering with you all.